Hey there, what's going on? Welcome to my exam AC900 Microsoft Azure Fundamental Study Guide. This is episode 63 entitled Windows Virtual Desktop. My name is Tim Warner. Where are we today in our skill development with AZ900 Microsoft Azure Fundamentals? Well, we're starting with the functional group called Describe Core Azure Services. Then we drill within the objective Describe Core Resources Available in Azure. And ultimately, we arrive to our granular skill, Describe the Benefits and Usage of Windows Virtual Desktop. If you point your browser to timw.info slash az900sg, that will bring you to an interactive table of contents of all of my videos. Let's get to work. What is Windows Virtual Desktop, also called WVD? Officially, WVD is a cloud-hosted desktop and app virtualization solution. If you look on the right side of the slide, you see two iOS or iPhone app versions of the Windows Virtual Desktop client. On the right, you can see virtualized applications, and on the left, you can see a virtualized Windows 10 desktop. Now, it's probably not the most efficient, certainly not the most comfortable experience to get to your Windows 10 desktop on a smartphone as opposed to a full computer, but the value proposition is that you can take what you may already be using on-premises for example, remote desktop services in Windows Server, and run all of that infrastructure in the cloud and let Microsoft take care of all of the high availability, all of the different server roles, and you can focus on just making sure that your line of business applications and Windows 10 desktops are available for consumption by your users. The client support here is pretty universal. We've got Windows Desktop, client applications, HTML5 web browser, that's a really low barrier to entry, Mac OS, iOS, Android. So the idea is no matter what the user has on his or her device as far as an operating system is concerned, they should be able to get to their work desktop and or virtualized work applications with minimal muss, fuss, or greasy aftertaste. Well, nowadays, as of this recording in December 2020, we're still going through the COVID-19 pandemic where remote work has, instead of being a minority stake and being an exception to the rule, remote work is pretty much the rule now around the world, isn't it? So the concept of the elastic workforce, no matter where the employee is in the world, as long as they can get an HTTPS encrypted internet connection into the Azure cloud, they should be able to get to their line of business applications and even their full desktop environment with their home folder and their docs and everything else in a safe and secure manner. Another value proposition of WVD is specialized workloads. Imagine that you've got everybody in your business running Windows 10, the latest and greatest client OS version, but the trade-off there is that you have some legacy line of business applications that don't work on those particular systems. One possible solution is if you can get the application to work in WVD, the user can sit on their computer or device, make a remote connection to their desktop that's in the cloud, and then run those specialized applications and workloads there. It's kind of funny in a way how IT, information technology, comes around full circle. When I got started in IT, actually when I was in college, mainframe computers were still around quite a bit. The idea where on your desktop you would just have a monitor and a keyboard, you probably wouldn't even have a mouse, and literally no computing is happening at the user's station. It's all happening in the server room where the mainframe computer is. Windows Virtual Desktop is a very similar situation. Your client device, whether it's a laptop or desktop computer, or an iPad or an Android device or a smartphone, no matter what your client device is, it's not doing a whole lot of computing when you're connecting to Windows Virtual Desktop. All of the compute is happening remotely in the cloud. And I can't stress that enough. The ability to get a full Windows 10 desktop that has your home folder mapped and your line of business applications available, no matter where you are in the world. And as you can see on the right-hand side, this is a conceptual diagram that shows some of the separation of duties. And what that also brings out is the point that WVD is attractive for many businesses because they can save on overhead, administrative and infrastructure costs, as well as infrastructure efforts. As you can see, in, again, in that diagram, and you 
see I provide an attribution URL. You've got on the left-hand side the users with their client applications making a connection to the Azure Cloud without any need of an express route circuit or a VPN. I want to stress that again. And then we have a separation of duties yet. You've got Windows Virtual Desktop admins who would be responsible for that service in Azure. And then you've got your Azure subscription admins that are concerned with identity and so on and so forth. We don't need to get deeper into the weeds there because we're concerned with Azure fundamentals. The middle and right parts of this diagram are really stuff that you'll find in the AZ-104 Azure Administrator skill set. Just because I can't help myself, I wanted to show you at least one reference architecture diagram that shows WVD in action, just in case you do want to go a step beyond the exam. What we have here from the highest level are our endpoints, and those users could be on your on-premises network, but they don't have to be. From an identity standpoint, one of the things you need to do to deploy WVD in your Azure subscription is configure account synchronization. You're going to need to have a local Active Directory environment where your users log on to their corporate machines with their email address or their username and a password. And I'm pretty sure we've spoken about Azure AD Connect elsewhere in this study guide, but that is a service that you can use to synchronize your local Active Directory identities into Azure AD which again, I know we discussed Azure AD elsewhere, is Azure's own identity store. Why do we need to do that synchronization? Because Windows Virtual Desktop looks only to Azure AD as an authentication source. So our users from our local environment have to be up in Azure AD to give those users a single sign-on experience into the Windows Virtual Desktop control plane. Again, I've set this up on premises and there's a lot of servers involved and a lot of network protocols. It's a beautiful thing that my Microsoft has abstracted all of that complexity away from us. I mean, honestly, even in Azure, it's kind of a heavy lift to get WVD off the ground, but it's not anywhere near as complicated as doing it all locally. And then the virtual machines and the infrastructure, as you can see here, is going to be associated with a virtual network, which is Azure's primary infrastructure security boundary in the cloud. This particular diagram shows an express route connection, but again, I want to stress that WVD does not require either a site-to-site -site VPN or an express route circuit to work. Learning resources for you. If you want to check out the Windows Virtual Desktop docs at Microsoft Docs, go to timw.info slash wvd1. My friend Travis Roberts is one of my favorite instructors, and you should definitely bookmark and subscribe to his YouTube channel, timw.info slash wvd2. Travis is an expert with WVD, so if you want to take the next step, you're in great hands with him. And lastly, you can go to Microsoft Learn. They have a free lesson called Introduction to Windows Virtual Desktop. That's timw.info slash wvd3. Thanks again, as always, for your attention and participation. Our next episode, speaking of which, is on Azure Express Route. In the meantime, my Twitter handle is TechTrainerTim. You can find all of my Pluralsight long-form courses at timw.info ps, and my website is techtrainertim.com. Take good care.